In this next part, we are going to look at isomorphic graphs. Now, often two graphs may look completely different on paper when you draw them out, but they are essentially the same uh, from the mathematical point of view. They are structurally the same. Now, we got uh, two graphs on the following slide. I'm just going to briefly switch over to the following slide so we can have a quick look. There we have them there. Uh, two isomorphic graphs and on the this side we have this graph uh, this set of graphs uh, sorry this graph this set of edges and on this side we have this okay whoops now the question is are they structurally the same Now, these graphs are the same. They have the same uh, vertices, the same edges, and the same edge to end point function. Okay? So, if we label the vertices on edges on the graph now on the next slide by the following mappings, uh, the graphs would be shown to be the same. So, we have the vertices here. And the edges here. So, we're going to show that the edges and the vertices correspond. So, first off, let's look at the edges. I'm going to sort of uh, draw, develop correspondence. So, I'm going to state that vertex 1 over here corresponds to vertex A over here. And if that is the case, then vertex 3 must correspond to vertex B in that they are adjacent. And they are adjacent by the uh, they are adjacent by A1. They're adjacent by A1 or on this side E2. E2. Okay. So what I'm saying is that I'm just going to go draw it here. This is corris this corresponds to A, this corresponds to B and this edge here corresponds to E2. Likewise over here we could say that 2 corresponds to uh, 2 corresponds to C. Necessarily 4 corresponds to D and we de uh, then conclude that A2 corresponds to edge E1. Now, there's a number of ways I could have done that there, but essentially that's how uh, it works. I'm just going to say, sort of go back to the mapping here for a second. I don't think I've used the exact same mapping here, but it's more or less something like this uh, with is what we're trying to construct. So develop correspondence, develop a mapping between the vertices on one graph and the vertices on the other graph, and likewise do the same thing for the edges. Structures as in graphs that are the same except for labeling essentially are called isomorphic structures iso essentially gives is the same is the same as saying the same as and morphic morphic means shape so the same shape to show that two structures are isomorphic we must uh, produce a relabeling uh, as in a so show the correspondence like we've done there previously one to one onto mappings between the elements of the structures and then show that the important properties of the structures are preserved under labeling. I'll just give you a quick example of that. Graphs are in, in graphs, paths, and loops, and cycles, and so on. That's what I mean by properties. Now, in cases of graphs, the elements are edges and vertices. Now, the important property in a graph is which is which edges connect to which vertices is connected it, it, which edges connect which vertices and again you can extend that as I sort of said to cycles and paths and stuff like that so we can use the notation uh, for to represent two different graphs v1 e1 g1 and v2 e2 g2 to represent two graphs the 
uh, V represents the vertices, the set of vertices, E represent the, represents the edges, and G represents the rule linking edges with vertices. So this is an important definition. So two graphs are isomorphic if there are bijections, remember bijections from functions, uh, so f of 1 mapping from v1 to v2, and an f of 2, which is another mapping, e1 to e2, so it's just sort of like the mappings, the correspondence we've done there previously, uh, such that for each edge a, which is in the, for each edge in the set of edges, uh, we can develop a um, a rule for the edges or for the vertices. Um, that is that is a sort of supposed to be a arrow. So x is 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 related to y if and only if this set of rules here corresponds to the the this the, the, this set of this rule here corresponds to this rule here. It's a very um, it, it actually best worked out with like a, going into d uh, greater depth with it in an example. But this is a very formal definition. So here, uh, give an example of two uh, isomorphic graphs and list the bijections that establish the isomorphism. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to draw a star. Graph. It's just a sort of formal name for something like that. And I'm going to uh, label the edges like this. A, B, C, D and E in the center. And on this side, I'm going to do something similar. I am going to have something here, uh, start up here, and one, two, three, four. And I'm going to call this U, V, W, X, and Y. Okay. So, what we're going to do is try and develop a correspondence. Now, first off, you might notice that E is is adjacent to four different, four other um, vertices. So, I'm going to state that E corresponds to U. Okay. Now, we can take our pick with the rest of them because we, I've done the hard part there. That uh, We can sort of say that V is connected back to U and D is connected back to E. So we can uh, state that V, E, or let's put it D is related to V. And we can do the, the same for the rest of them. E is related to w b to x and y to c and we can name the edges there the corresponding edges and do the same thing there so that is a quick example there it's a very basic example the examples you'd be dealing with are probably a bit tougher because it's not always easy to establish if two graphs are isomorphic or not an exception to this case is the cases where graphs are simple, sort of like what I've just done there a second ago. In this case, we need to check if there is a bijection, a rule that links the vertices of one graph to another, which preserves adjacent vertices, um, such that the uh, if a pairing of vertices are adjacent in one graph, then the corresponding uh, then the corresponding uh, vertices in the other graph are also adjacent, that there is a sort of a, a similarity there. Now, if the graphs are not simple, we need more sophisticated methods to check if they're isomorphic or not. And However, this is often straightforward to show. It's often straightforward to show that they're not isomorphic. So, uh, proof the opposite. 
and you can do this by showing if any of the following seven conditions are true. So the first one is the two graphs have different number of vertices. That's almost a giveaway. The second one is the same. They have different number of edges. So automatically, you, they can't be structurally the same if they have the different number of components. Now, if one graph has parallel edges, le, for example, uh, something like this, and the other graph doesn't, that's immediately a giveaway as well. If one graph is a simple graph and the other graph is not a simple graph, then so. If a, one graph has a loop and the other one does not, that's a giveaway as well. If one graph has a vertex, uh, vertex of degree uh, k, for example, something like degree 4, and the other does not, if it has the vertex, uh, the highest vertex uh, degree of a vertex is 3, automatically that's a giveaway as well. So you can check a thing called the degree sequence. One graph is connected and the other one is not. And if one graph has a cycle and the other one does not. So those are ways of sort of identifying or stating that two graphs are not adjacent or not isomorphic. And so it's a sort of like you try and prove the opposite there. Now you have to be quite exhaustive with it. You have to get, um, if you want to try sort of do this in an exam, in an exam situation.